Of all the historic homes in Savannah, Georgia, many consider the Mercer Williams House to be the city's most mysterious. Ever since the house was built in the late 1860s, the Mercer Williams House has seen many tragedies, and the people who have owned and occupied the home quite possibly have been more affected by hauntings than any other residents of Savannah. Today, the Mercer Williams House is most associated in the mind of society via its infamous mentioning in the John Barrett novel, Midnight in a Garden of Good and Evil, which was later turned into a film directed by Clint Eastwood. The infamy related to the house stems from the murder of Danny Hansford, who was the assistant and lover of the home's owner, Jim Williams. As a result of its tumultuous past, the Mercer Williams House has become a favorite attraction for those visiting Savannah. The Mercer Williams House is now owned by Jim Williams' sister, Dorothy Kingery, who runs it as a museum. The Mercer Williams House is located on Bull Street across from Monterey Square. The house was designed for General Hugh Whedon Mercer by architect John Norris. Norris was New York born and raised before coming to Savannah where he enjoyed success in building houses, churches, and lighthouses throughout the area. In 1860, Ground was broken on the Mercer property, but construction was halted due to the Civil War. As for Norris himself, he quickly moved back to his home state just before the war began. Around the year 1868, the house was completed by its new owner, John Wilder, as the Confederate General Hugh Whedon Mercer was unable to finish the home. However, no member of the Mercer family ever actually had the chance to live at the Mercer Williams house. For a period of time, in the 20th century, the house was home to the Savannah Shriners' Ali Temple. After the Shriners' tenure, the house was left vacant for almost 10 years before it was finally found and purchased in 1969. The new owner was the eccentric Jim Williams. He was known about town as an antique dealer and preservationist who loved Savannah's history and architecture. In 1955, Williams, who was just 24 years old at the time, bought three houses on Savannah's East Converse Street. Thus began his pursuit of home restoration, where Williams bought and restored over 50 houses, including the one that now bears his name. After a nearly two-year restoration process, Williams successfully renovated the house, making it once again a grand mansion. He was so satisfied with the restoration that Williams decided to make the house his permanent residence. Williams was also known to throw elaborate parties, but the good times came to an end in 1981, after the shooting death of Williams' assistant and lover, Danny Hansford, a former prostitute with a questionable past. Williams was charged with Hansford's murder, and subsequently tried four times. The first trial ended with him receiving life in prison. The judgment was later overturned upon the discovery of contradicting police reports. However, it was far from over. A third trial ended in a hung jury. But two years later, the fourth and final trial ended with Williams being found not guilty. About six months after being found not guilty, Williams died from heart failure and complications from pneumonia. He allegedly collapsed to his death near the spot where Hansford was shot dead. Williams and Hansford apparently are not the only two deaths that the property has seen over the years. In 1969, before Williams purchased the house, a boy named Tommy Downs, who was only 11 years old, entered the abandoned house allegedly chasing pigeons. Somehow, the boy fell from the house. Rumors suggest that he fell from the roof, while others believe he fell from the second-story balcony. The fall would prove deadly for most kids, but Tommy's tragic fall was made all the more gruesome, as the boy landed on the wrought iron fence, with the spiked top lodging in his head. An especially grim version of an encounter with the ghost of the young boy is that this tortured young soul has reportedly been seen reenacting the final moments of his life. Caught in a loop of horror, forever fallen off the roof of the house and onto the iron spikes of the fence. The sister of the young boy who died from that fall has said that the story of her brother's death is indeed true. She recalled that the medics had to cut the spike off the fence in an attempt to save her brother's life. She still remembers seeing the medics rush her brother off to the hospital, despite knowing that it was already too late. 
Like many of the historic houses in Savannah, there have been reports of paranormal activity at the Mercer Williams house. These reports usually include apparitions, disembodied voices, phantom footsteps, and that unnerving feeling that someone is watching you. The current owner of the house, Dorothy Kingery, is usually tight-lipped when it comes to stories about her notorious brother, and even more dismissive when it comes to paranormal activity at the house. In fact, she claims to have never had any experience of the supernatural kind. But that does very little in swaying others from sharing their own ghostly experiences involving the house. Since William's death, it is said that members of the staff who have worked inside of his house, have time and time again seen the ghost of Jim Williams. It is said that he appears as a full apparition, walking up and down the halls of the house. It is also said that the ghost of Danny Hansford haunts the premises. It's been alleged that Williams became so distraught by Hansford's lurking spirit, that he reached out to a voodoo priestess to rid Hansford's soul from the house. According to some, they do not believe the voodoo practitioner's cleansing of the house worked and it was the ghost of Danny Hansford who killed Jim Williams. His soul was clearly unable to move on, while the man who had killed him lived on as a free man. So, he exacted his revenge, scaring Williams to death. Which could be possible, especially when considering William's lifeless body was discovered in almost the same spot in which Danny had been shot dead. Another form of paranormal activity that goes on at the house is a phenomenon that you can experience without ever actually entering the Mercer Williams house. Over the years, many people have witnessed ghostly images that appear in the windows of the house. These ghost-like reflections appear not only at night but during the waking hours as well. Some have claimed that these images in the windows look to be a reflection of a young boy. Could these sightings also be Tommy Downs? Whether it is Tommy or not, the photos of these encounters have appeared on the internet on a regular basis, and the pictures that have been circulated are convincing evidence that the Mercer Williams house is indeed haunted. During Jim Williams' tenure as owner of the house, everyone in town knew that he threw the grandest parties in Savannah. Specifically, his Christmas parties became the stuff of legend, as his Christmas party was the social event of the year. Every member of Savannah's high society would clamor for an invite, which always made Williams glean with pleasure. After his acquittal in 1989, Williams threw his last lavish Christmas party before his death. In the years following, the house sat quietly. But, five years later, reports of parties being held at the house began sprouting about. It is alleged, that if you pass by the Mercer Williams house on the night which Jim Williams would throw his annual Christmas party, you'll see the chandelier's light illuminate the whole house, painting images of the guests in the windows as they move from room to room. Some even claim to see the women in their best societal gowns, and the men dressed to the nines as they enter the house, showing up to the festivities fashionably late. If you ever find yourself in Savannah and would like to visit the Mercer Williams house, it is open to the public Monday through Saturday between the hours of 10.30 a.m. to 4.10 p.m., and Sundays between 12 p.m. till 4 p.m. However, due to the wishes of the current owner of the house, it is highly doubtful that you will hear any stories of ghosts from the current staff. In fact, many who have asked to hear about the ghosts that allegedly haunt the house, or about Jim Williams, will be promptly dismissed. But you can judge for yourself if the stories behind the most mysterious house in Savannah were true or not.